Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Greta and I love talking about niche perfumes and some other luxury stuff. I have been dying to do this video, but I've been waiting for this heat wave to break because it was really hard to do during a heat wave. Um, heat, it's still hot out, not gonna lie, but and now we have a tropical storm hitting. So um, it's been a long night where I was woken at an ungodly hour by the winds and had to run outside and bring some things in and whatnot. I wasn't expecting it to be this bad. My, my yard is like destroyed. But anyway, so I'm trying to get some extra energy here. Whew, trying this like mushroom stuff. Do you ever try these like mushroom drinks? So I'm trying that um, mud water. Uh, but just to be sure, I added some espresso capsules to make sure it works. <laughs> you know can't risk it but anyway cheers so what I have here is 15 of my favorite sweet woody fragrances pretty much like patchouli vanilla fragrances for the most part I don't think there's a whole lot of oud in here I, I pretty much leaned into other kinds of woods or mixed woods and some patchoulis but I love 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 that scent profile of the sweet woods and resinous woods and the sappy woods from like the ambery kind of resins I just absolutely love that so I have 15 here is what I pulled from my collection yeah so let's get into it Okay. Um, oh, and you know what? Um, I'm wearing this Disney Playful Nude lipstick. This is one of my absolute favorite mauve kind of nudes that's like, it's just my easy reach, goes with everything. It's a very natural looking, like my lips but better kind of mauve nude. And I know this Disney collection has been on sale and then now they just launched mini this weekend at the Disney event. So, Keep an eye out for that. Um, I'm sure I will get that and I'll feature the mini too, but I'm really, really loving this one. In fact, I thought of during the sale picking up some backups. This was probably one of the best things I ever got from PR. So absolutely loving it. And I'm really a chapstick kind of addict. I have dry lips and I can't stand dry lips. So I'm always putting chapstick on. And these are really hydrating, which I really, really like. So anyway, playful me. Let's start with some cult favorites. Chanel. Chanel has Chanel has both Le Lion and Coromandel. I tend to prefer Coromandel even though I've got both. The Le Lion is a little bit deeper, probably leans a little more masculine even though they're both unisex, truly unisex, I have them. But the Coromandel, I mean, you just can't beat this fragrance. Like it is phenomenal. It is the epitome of that sweet resinous patchouli, um, alabanums and amber with a little bit of spiciness. And it's just, it, it's so perfect to me. I mean, it's just, it's so timeless and unisex and universal and seems to just work on everyone. And everyone loves this one that, I mean, I can't say a single bad thing about it. And it's, you know, Chanel always smells classy. There's that certain DNA to it. That is just so phenomenal. I, they, they keep doing these price jacks though that are killing me, but you know, I'm seeing them increase even more that I kind of want to get a big bottle of it. But yeah, I definitely like Coromandel over Le Lion. The next other kind of cult favorite is by Frederick Mall and it's Musk Ravageur. <sighs> this is another favorite. This is one that I do not have the bottle yet, but I do have um, this sample that I have been savoring like you can't imagine because, you know, two mLs is not a whole lot. I've just been waiting for now the fall to order it because I knew I wasn't going to wear it over the spring or summer. But, man, I love this one. Um, it does open more vanilla, slightly powdery with those woods coming in there. And then as it dries down, just gets rich and complex. And, you know, I was so intimidated by this when I'd heard about it before I tried it, 
that it was this, oh, this animalic kind of polarizing kind of fragrance that I was a little worried about it. And I was like, gosh, I don't know if I'm gonna like this. They, they make it out to be so horrible. And it's phenomenal, phenomenal. When they say animalic, I'm like, okay, the only animalic thing to me is that it's attractive. There's something very attractive and alluring and addictive that kind of brings out this carnal drive in you, not animalic in that it smells animal-like. So it's just, it's so gorgeous with this balance and how it gets richer and more complex that I love this fragrance. I do prefer a little bit cooler weather, not cold weather. I mean, San Diego doesn't really get too cold. But I do like it to be a little cooler. This isn't really a heat wave kind of fragrance for me because it is a really strong fragrance. This one lasts forever for me. This one will take me into morning. And it's so good. It's got a little bit of spice in there um, and a little bit of vanilla powderiness and along with those deep resins. It's just so darn good. I love this fragrance. So yeah, I must grab a jar. The next one that's pretty popular is by Amouage and it is Material. This is from 2021. I absolutely love this, this launch. Material was named after Madonna Material Girl. It is not materials like fabrics. It is material as in um, materialistic is the way it means by material. So, and it is not plural, it is singular material. I love this one. This is one of my absolute favorite complex woody vanilla fragrances. I sprayed these all before I got ready like an hour ago so that they would be at a beautiful dry down and I could get the top notes if I wanted. But this is a beautiful amber vanilla primarily. And then you have that complexity. This is by Cecile Zorokian, who is just a wizard with these fragrances. Uh, I didn't really catch on to her as a perfumer until like two, three years ago, where I started hearing her name more and more and paying attention more and more to who created the perfumes to kind of find these common denominators of which perfumers I saw over and over again creating perfumes that I absolutely love. And she does create some incredible complex fragrances. I just love that this is a creamy vanilla with that benzoin that kind of radiates a little bit. Yeah, it's sweet and I, oh man, material. I just, this is one that I do pull out early in the season. It just seems to work. It works on like this, like this hurricane season where you have this weird weather and you want something comforting and it, it seems to work even in that humid kind of air. Like it's, it's not that it's so hot today. I feel like the heat broke, but it is wicked humid. Like I have the air conditioning going, not for temperature, but it's just ugly out. It's just really thick air right now. But absolutely love material. Uh, yeah, by Amwash. Oh, now I have one that I absolutely love year round. And I find that I can wear this in summer, which is really remarkable to me. And it's by Veronique Gabay Sexy Gary. This one came out in 2019. Got a lot of attention this brand last year. This really is a favorite of mine. Sexy Garrig is meant for the Mediterranean where they have this dry land and this these greenery, almost like almost like fir trees kind of, but they're these little shrubs that have a scent kind of like fir trees and balsamics. <sighs> and it's just so stinking good. It's very aromatic in the evening time there at sundown where the, the fragrance just emanates. And living in an area like my little microclimate here is very, very similar to the Mediterranean, which is why my yard, I grow a lot of the same things here, a lot of the same produce and trees. I have a lot of Italian cypress here too, that I just, it's the same climate, everything. In any case, uh, Sexy Gehrig, oh, I love this one. It has a little bit of freshness. So yes, again, it's this ambery balsamic vanilla, but there's also this like pine needle in there, this greenery, little bit of herbaliness to that patchouli that gives it this freshness that, and it's a little bit, it's a little on the lighter side. So I can wear this year round whenever I'm in that mood, kind of like this, 
either nature mood or outdoorsy mood that and there's something extremely addictive about this fragrance. There's something addic addictive about these sappy resins that you get on these balsamic trees. Um, and, you know, I've seen some people in Fragrantica reviews kind of confuse balsamic. When you say balsamic, you're not referring to balsamic vinegar. It's balsam trees. So basically fir trees, balsam trees, Christmas trees, that sort of cypress trees, like that sort of fragrance is what they're talking about. Those green trees, those um, pine needle kind of trees. But yes, it's very balsam. And, and by resins, we mean like the sap that looks ambery because amber again is a fantasy note that is created. And I'll always forget this, the third note, but it is by vanilla, uh, labdanum and something else I can't think of that creates that fantasy note of amber, which by amber, they mean amber resins on those pine type of trees, which are very sweet and, and sticky sweet kind of. And it's just, it's a, it's a scent profile that I absolutely love and find highly addictive. This next one is from 2014. It's newer to me. I didn't try it until, I really gave it a lot of attention this year recently, but I think I first tried it a year ago, but just got distracted and kind of moved on, but I, I really think this one deserves a lot more attention, or maybe I missed all the attention it got. I don't know, but I'm just really, really enamored with this, which is by Paris Monte Carlo no Patchouli Nosy B. Holy cow, do I love this one, and actually this brand. I told you, I told you I was going to go through a rabbit hole because I revisited the brand. The vanilla, the vanilla de Tahitian is amazing, and when you first spray this, I get that same creamy, sweet vanilla. It's almost like, um, it's probably not, but it has like this creamy magnolia flower mixed with a creamy vanilla kind of feel to it that is so phenomenal. And this opens with that and then goes into this nice addictive patchouli. And man, this was my scent yesterday. It just, it keeps something more addictive. It doesn't go into that thick, spicy, complex kind of like musk ravageur kind of zone. It really sticks, yet it's not like this where it goes pine needle and fresh. It really, it keeps that something white in there, something white and creamy in there. There's a hint of cocoa in here, which also helps keep it that creamy kind of thing going. Paris Monte Carlo, Patchouli Nosy B. If you want a more elegant, easy to wear, creamy, um, almost leaning gourmand like with the vanilla and cocoa in here. But it's not like a chocolate fragrance because sometimes that's a little much for me. It's more like this little noyance, this little hint. It's, it's kind of like the cocoa makes it a little creamier and almost a little bit of a fluff to it, like a fluff to that vanilla. Not creamy, not voluminous, anything like that. It does stay a little bit more translucent type, but it's good. Really, really like this one. Uh, it was my scent yesterday. Absolutely loved it. This one is also a release from last year, 2021, and it is by Fragrance Dubois Secret Tryst. <sighs> this was launched. There were four fragrances in this launch. I think it's the Lover's Collection, maybe. Man, this is this one I fell in love with. Yes, I love London Spice on men. Secret Tryst is, you know, I love these woody profiles. And this one was my favorite overall, and especially for me. I know a lot of people gravitated to Cavort, but I just, this one grabbed me. I mean, it was really weird to me how everybody went to Cavort, and I just absolutely fell head over heels for this one. Um, Fragrance Dubois just really does these woods really, really well too. And they have incredible longevity and incredible quality. This one is very ambery. It definitely has volume to it. It has that sticky sweet kind of thing with that vanilla in there again. Uh, a secret tryst, you know, a tryst being like an affair. So it's like this secret affair. So there's something very like allure and sexy, secretive, and just, there is something very, um, there's, there is that carnal attraction to this fragrance also. 
This one has a little bit of floral to it. Comparatively to some of these others, it gets really hard when you have to like find these differences, but I do get the rose and jasmine in here. And you know, it, it gives a little bit of this different, lighter kind of dimension, adding those florals in there while still having this heavy vanilla amber going on also. I find this one so incredibly magnificent. Ooh, there's like a scratch on the label. Next up is a newer release. This is actually this year and it is a flanker. It's from House of Siage and it is Ruby Rain. Gosh, I just think this is so magnificent. Now, it kind of reminds me of that Cartier leopard. Ah, those glimmering red eyes. See, now this is really pretty. Now, I wasn't crazy about Emerald Rain. In fact, it took me like two years to appreciate that one and come around and spray it in the wintertime, which is definitely what you need is more of like this stormy weather, comfort, sexy kind of weather, and then it's just spot on. Um, but it did take me a little bit of to come around to that fragrance and catch on to it. But the Ruby Rain was just, yeah, this flanker is just the bee's knees to me. And it is so stunning the way they carved into this 18 karat gold here with the Swarovski crystals. Now this one has a little bit of suede in there. So it changes things up just a little bit, but it's a sexy suede. It's not an overwhelming suede where, you know, you feel like it goes too masculine. However, for the men out there looking for a cupcake that might work for them, I highly recommend Ruby Rain. This one is magnificent on both men and women. That suede just kind of makes it be able to kind of go men, women, and it plays differently on the skin and it really smells sexy on a man. It has a little saffron in there, some spices in there, the suede, the patchouli, the vanilla, the labdanum. This one goes a little richer and complex where you do have oud in here, you do have the patchouli, and you do have that incense, and you just have all this rich, sexy, deep, kind of stuff going on, but there's still something vibrant in there. So it's not too deep, dark, you know, and sexy, but it's, um, it does have this muskiness to, to it that kind of gives it a little bit of air around you. And it's like a creamy musk around you. It's a very sexy kind of vibe to this one. I just think this is amazing. There is a little bit of floral in here. I think Rose uh, rose and orange blossom that just gives a little bit of brightness to it and kind of lifts it from being too much of a deep fragrance. It's so incredibly well blended that it's really this vibe around you. The one thing that does pop out though is that suede, but it is this sexy, gentle suede. It's not a harsh leather by any stretch. I just find this one really sexy. So Ruby Rain by House of Siage. You know, I forgot another cult favorite. We have here by Andy Tower. You know, I love these Lucky Scent things, right? This is a bottle that is has been on my list. I hate being at retail. So I'm trying to find it on sale at least or coupon code or something um, instead of 100% full retail. It's killing me. Maybe during Scent Explorer. I, you know, there's a lot of great sales at Scent Explorer. That's why uh, I've always gone in the past the ticket price is always offset by the money you'll save on the disc on the discount codes there. Incredible, incredible sales. Um, so I think I'm gonna pick it up here if I don't find it on sale somewhere else. But it is by Andy Tower and it's, I hope I say this right because my French is not the best, La du Desert Marocaine. Ooh. This one is a little bit more of an aromatic kind of spin on that whole patchouli vanilla thing. Oh, you get this um, dry, aromatic, there is that like coriander and lavender in here that give these beautiful aromatics in addition to that um, resinous, patchouli, vanilla, ambery kind of base. The lavender always gives me a little bit of this um, almost like menthol-y kind of vibe at openings when I get that lavender there and dries down just so incredibly beautiful and comforting. The lavender does disappear and then it gets into this richer balsamic, ambery, vanilla kind of fragrance with a little bit of this like dry smoothness to it. It's just so 
incredible. Absolutely love this one. It's fantastic for in the fall as well. So Andy Tower. The next one, I've had trouble finding this bottle now. I mean, I think it became pretty popular and I've had a little bit of a hard time here getting it. And it's by Carolina Herrera, the Confidential Collection, which is her Privé line. I absolutely love that collection. I've got quite a few now. I think five and two more that um, is in my order with the Musk Ravageur. Really, really enjoying her. And it's Patchouli Nightfall. I also have several in decants. I have quite a bit in decants. I got a lot of them, like 10 of them in decants. I have an amazing subscriber in Belgium that when I was in Europe last summer had sent me a package of all of these. And Ellie, I miss you. I don't know what's happened to you. I miss you dearly. Uh, but Nightfall Patchouli, mm, so, so good. And I did find Dapper has Nightfall Patchouli, so I did order it from there for the sheer reason that I cannot find this. It's really hard. It's, out, it's always out of stock. And they're not easy to even find retail here, uh, being from Spain, I believe. I have a hard time finding her stuff. So, but I do still have a little bit left in here, a tiny, tiny bit that I'm savoring kind of helps me compare to this, which I have to say is a pretty darn good version. But Nightfall Patchouli. Now this is definitely in comparison to these, a more vibrant kind of fragrance. It is definitely brighter. It is not as rich and resinous and spicy as a lot of these other fragrances that I've just mentioned. Even though there is that cinnamon and this like earthiness in the dry down in there, that like patchouli earthiness to it, the patchouli in here is a fresher kind of patchouli. There, you know, there's, what I've learned is there is so many different kinds of patchouli out there. I used to think years ago that I absolutely hated patchouli. I didn't. I just hated the patchouli I smelled in college. Like patchouli oil that, you know, like that my hippie friends would, I was not a hippie, but my best friend went hippie and I hated the patchouli oil she would wear. It just kind of made me nauseous. And I occasionally encounter that. But this one is a beautiful, fresh kind of patchouli. And then it has um, that sweetness there and it has that vanilla there and it greenness to the patchouli in a fresh way. I find this one really, really good and really easy to wear, but again, keeps selling out everywhere. So if you find it, grab it because I just want to say, I hope that, you know, if there's one that is your favorite that I have not mentioned, I do apologize. Put it down below. The odds are maybe I just haven't smelled it. I've smelled a lot of fragrances, um, but you know, sometimes there are some that I haven't tried. Now this one is newer to me. This is another one where it is in my cart. I will be placing an order. Just trying to pace my orders out. I try to stay in my budget. Um, this one is from Italy. This is Olfatology. It is owned by the company Boyce 1920 and Profuma di Firenze. They're in Florence there. And this is a new company of theirs that they put under that umbrella, I think a year ago. This is one that's definitely gone in my cart and it is Yosemite. This one is so, so good. This one is a little different also. It does have a touch of leather in there, but it doesn't come off as a lot of leather on me. It really comes off more as this lavender, this like lavender powdery kind of facet to it really kind of makes it light and more delicate while staying that patchouli musky fragrance and definitely has a lot of sweetness to it. But I almost get this like citrusy kind of edge to it. There's something like tart coming in there that keeps it vibrant while still being a little of the aromatic and a still this like sweet, there's this muskiness that gives it this fluffiness while still staying that amazing patchouli, woody, sweet fragrance. Just love this one. Uh, it has quite good longevity. And again, I've found this house to be super affordable. Like I think it's $130 for 100 mLs. Same thing, 130 euros, which to me is a really good price. Now, what would the video be without including a Raja? I haven't featured much Raja lately. So um, I think I'm kind of coming out of that rabbit hole. I have a lot, a lot of Rajas. But we have the Rajadev Eau Parfumerie, 
for the 15th year anniversary, abbreviated RDHP 15. The outperformer is on the sixth floor of Harrods. Raja was one of the very first stores to be there. It is his boutique. He carries Raja along with other brands there at his shop. That is where I purchased pretty much my collection. Um, almost all of my bottles are from RDHP over there. So um, I've spent quite a bit of money. I mean, tens and tens of thousands of dollars I've spent at that store in the span of a year. I have stopped shopping there. Um, they have a change of management that I'm not really the biggest fan of. I, I have to be honest that, um, and I, I've heard stories from other people too and other subscribers that noticed a little bit of a change. So, and they're like, well, that explains it. I mean, you'd think that having spent tens and tens of thousands of dollars there that they would be kind to me, but um, I, I, I've not really found that. So I've kind of pulled back from shopping there. I will shop at Raja.com. Now the Raja.com is a different entity. Most people don't understand that. They are very different entities. Um, and I actually quite like the Raja. It's just that this store did sales and that's why I would always shop here for their sales. But I, I don't know. I, I'm definitely not enjoying shopping there at this time. I hope it changes because I do love Raja and I love his fragrances. Now Raja, the RDHP, beautiful with the purple Swarovski crystals, very regal. Absolutely love this. Not to be confused with the Purple Cap collection. Those are different, and it is a slightly different purple. This one is woody and powdery. Has more of this violet kind of vibe to it. I mean, yes, there's the iris in there, but you have that vibrant violet, which is also powdery, but in a brighter sort of way than iris, which can go a little bit more cosmetics or baby powderish. Violet is a more like violet candy kind of vibrant. There's something just so regal about this. I can't deny it. I mean, especially having just smelled like, you know, 10, 15 other fragrances in comparison where they can smell a little bit more earthy and outdoorsy and like the woods or the desert. This just smells regal. This smells indoor, dressed up, fancy, um, polished. There's, there's just something about Raj's creations. I mean, that's why I absolutely love them. There's something so elegant about them. You can be in casual kind of jogger, like a jogger suit and put on a Raja and just feel like a million bucks. You know, it's right up there with just putting on designer shoes and bag and just feeling automatically elevated a little bit. It just kind of elevates the look. The Raja fragrances do that. There's something, I mean, that cosmetics vibe to it while staying completely unisex. This is not like, you know, some of his fragrances smell like the cosmetics counter to me and give that girly girl, fancy lady kind of vibe. This gives that in a unisex sort of way. It's so hard to describe Raj's. Yeah, it's woody and powdery and vibrant and addictive and regal and I think this one is fantastic, RDHP 15. And this one isn't exclusive to that store. It can only be purchased there. My dog is driving me nuts. I keep trying to talk and he keeps barking as soon as I talk. I just, <laughs> I'm like, all right, let me just repeat it and I'll edit that out. And then he starts barking again. But for the 17th time, this is an exclusive to the Rajadev Boutique in Harrods there, the RDHP shop. So you do have to purchase it there. I have to say I'm quite impressed. I can see the lawn, I can hear the lawn guys out there. I hear lawn mowers, um, blowers going, leaf blowers. I mean, there's like a tropical storm this morning. I mean, I'm happy. I mean, they're cleaning up a little bit. I know I've got some broken branches and stuff, but um, I'm impressed because it's still a little drizzling out and it's still raining and whatnot. So I'm impressed that they're out there. I don't know how effective their work's going to be at this time, but hey. Okay, the other house that you know I'm a huge fan of is Zerjoff. So I can't not mention any Zerjoffs here. In fact, not only am I mentioning them, but I have three Zerjoffs that fit this bill and are phenomenal. The first one is an exclusive to the shop in Torino, the flagship shop there, and it is Torino. 
Turin, Torino, English, Italian, ever. Torino um, is an exclusive there. You can email them and purchase it that way. You do not have to go there in person. Oh, I love this fragrance. It's not spoken about enough because it's an exclusive and not as many people have gotten their nose on it. But man, this is so good. Yeah. So I get that Madagascar vanilla. I get this little bit of booziness from it. I get that pine tree, cypress tree, kind of balsamic kind of vibe. A little bit of vetiver in there. Like this is incredible. It's a little bit of a different spin again from the other fragrances that I've been mentioning. There's that hint of booziness into that vanilla and the vetiver keeping it a little fresher wood. Yeah, incredible. Incredible. Yet still has that sticky sweet wood kind of vibe to it. This one is so, so good. Really needs to get talked about more Torino by Zerjoff. The next one from Zerjoff is Ouverture. In the V Velvet collection, in this gorgeous gray velvet here. Ouverture, Ouverture. Oh, I love this one. Yeah, so this one has a little bit of a fruity kind of spin to it in comparison to all these others. You definitely, right off the bat, and this is at an hour dry down, I get a fruity sweetness to it to that woody resinous kind of thing. Woody, ambery, vanilla. I couldn't tell you what fruit was in here, but there is this fruity essence to it, which is kind of neat, a very sweet, you know, with the Lang & Lang, you'd think it would go this tropical sort of way, and I've heard that, but for me, I don't get tropical from this. I do get almost like fruity, sweet, woody, vanilla, ambery kind of fragrance. It still stays primarily that woody vanilla, but somehow has this nice, like vibrant sweetness to it. This one's so darn good. This is another one that is just such, such a favorite. I mean, this one is, you're really hard pressed to not like this one. Ouverture, super addictive. And I'm gonna have to go a little faster because they're gonna make more and more noise. I don't know if you can hear it. I'm just gonna assume you can. Zerjoff Tony Iomi. This one also sold out, sold out, sold out, but you can now find it. Um, I think I'm going to grab this from Beverly Hills Perfume Range. Just forget where I was getting it from before. Absolutely love this one. Um, definitely more complex. It stays more in that rough. There's a little bit of leather in there. It's complex. It's sweet, but there's leather and there's wood and there's vanilla and there's it goes in all these directions. I mean, I guess theoretically you could say it's a little more masculine, but ah, oh, I love this one. And there's also this light aspect. There's this, this melange of this, like all this different complexity in the Iomi where you just get lost sniffing it. My dogs are not gonna stop while the guys are out there taking care of the yard. I, I have to wrap this up. But um, vanilla, powdery, but leather and vanilla and sweet and woods and really incredible. Tony Iomi. The last one, um, you know my opinion by my last video, is by Stefano Mertloka. It is Crying of Evil. I did just do a video on that. If you want to hear about that, you can go watch that video. Um, Otherwise, that's the 15 that I absolutely think are the best. Woody, woody patchouli, vanilla, sweet, like sweet woody fragrance is that I absolutely love. Um, let me know down below any that you think I should have mentioned and didn't mention, or maybe that I should pick up or get my nose on. And I will see you guys in the next one. Mwah.